You have seen what the acting president, Yemi Oshibajo, has been doing. He has met with uh, yes. groups, he has met with religious uh, leaders, yes. with governors, as a matter of fact. And the message that he has passed across to them is that of unity of this country. Would you say that yes. that approach is able to give an understanding that what the acting president wants is stops at unity, or does it progress to the question of uh, restructuring? That's a beautiful, beautiful question. And I, I think the acting president did excellently well in doing that. But that's only half the story. It is one thing for the acting president to tell the people. It is another thing for the people to tell the acting president. Those meetings do not create a framework where the acting president will listen to the people. And the environment itself does not create the framework. I mean, look, he's inside Asu Rock, inside with all the protocols duly observed and everything. Nobody can really speak his mind. You know, so you need to create platforms in which, you see, for too long, government has been telling us, telling the people, giving directions, issuing this and issuing that. It is high time people in government should listen. I mean, look at what IBB is saying. IBB, IBB, there was a particular time anybody who called restructure IBB would call him an extremist. There were times when they would say, no go areas. You cannot discuss this and you cannot discuss that. Now the chicken has come home to roost. And you'd have to face reality. So the man who refused restructuring in the first time is now an apostle of restructuring. It should tell our leaders something, that the way you see yourself in power is absolutely different from what power is when you are outside. And that is the truth and the reality of life. Mr. But the Byron. government and the people and the Nigeria that God give, gave us is for the people in government and for the people outside government, for us to live together and to be mutually reinforcing of each other. Let's take a look at some it of the It is what for raised. people from the Southwest. Uh, Mr. Byron, just, just a minute, Parliament to jump in. Uh, let's look at some of the issues that he raised there. Uh, then, I mean, the, the dailies described it as this is uncharacteristic of him uh, jumping into the fray in a rather lengthy manner, speaking about the subject, which, as you also highlighted, he would have said, no, 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 don't go this way yet. But he even went as far as saying, even the idea of having federal roads in some states, in local governments, he thinks, look, these things are outdated and we need to change strategy. But start with where he says he wants, or uh, he's suggesting perhaps a shrunken federal government, devolution of power to the states, and maybe the government at the center will just concentrate on maybe foreign affairs, defense. And, and this federalism, I mean, that sort of federalism we've seen in some other countries. Are some of those things, you think that, yes, indeed, very much acceptable? Absolutely. You see, the, the, point, the point is this. Over time, when we were growing up in the 70s and in the 80s and in the 90s, you will hear federal government take over this. Federal government has taken over that. Federal government has taken over education. Federal government has taken over this. So the federal government has become a machine that has, is carrying more loads that its head and its neck can sustain. And so when you have a bended neck and the head is almost having a headache, what do you expect? This is what you expect. So the first thing that anybody will do is to start removing some of the load. And you need to go back because there's a template. There are things that the state can say. Why must every decision about everything be centered from Abuja? Okay. So in terms of steps, um, we need to... Um, sort of organize um, within the states or within the geopolitical zones. Uh, discussions, uh, uh, directly put, referenda, uh, and then after which we can start aggregating that and restructuring. If you look at Brexit, for example, the time for the referenda is an instant, but the restructuring process is, takes time. You know, and Nigerians shouldn't be in a hurry to do something that is going to last us 100 years or the next 50 years because we need to be quite patient. I think we need to discuss issues. As you said, most of the speakers had said, you know, in the, in the clip you, you showed, 
um, the exclusive list in the Constitution is too heavy. 50% of what is there should not be there at all. We should need to talk about resource control. It is because we don't have resource control that people are not looking for resources within themselves. And in any case, the biggest resource is the human resource. And so it is necessary for people to actually start taking another look at this. If you specialize in what is your core competence, you are likely to be more efficient than if you want to take on board every other thing. And the reason why that there has been this drive to over-centralize at the federal government has been more, you know, basically we've said the historical thing, we've, we've said, you know, uh, military management and things like that, but it's also a sense of distrust. So that discussion has to be had. And there is no way, I, I don't think we can escape it. Otherwise, we'll delay, and you, you, you find out that the more we delay, the worse the problems get. So I believe the federal government um, should lead. And as a matter of fact, you, you know, in the manifesto of the party, of the, the party of government, restructuring is there. So it's not new. It's not new to APC. It's not new to PDP. Most of the other parties that we are aware of, it's not new to them. So to basically, Nigerians um, are ready for this. Mr. Bar permit me to just come in here. Uh, when we take from uh, some of the uh, comments that we heard, you saw that clip, and in particular, the, the Plateau State Governor said that perhaps restructuring is not the way to go. Is restructuring any different from change agenda that this government came with? Or is this just another slogan that will come and pass as change seems to be fading away? Well, well, there's, there's a difference, and I'm not sure whether the Plato State Governor did say that restructuring is not the solution. I think he said it is not the only solution, or he said that with restructuring, problems don't disappear immediately. And that's probably true. Uh, but you see, the point is this. If you want to, 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 to if, you, if you have constant malaria, right, you can give yourself an in injection that cures the malaria in you. But you will go back, if you go back to live in a mosquito-infested, dirty environment, you will have that malaria again. And then you keep on collecting injection until the day the injection does not work anymore. And then you die. So this is what we do not want to happen. And the, the I am not sure how, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people have talked about restructuring and to many people restructuring means a whole lot of things. But the truth be told is that we want to recalibrate how Nigeria would work in a way that Nigeria will work for the people. And for the people, I mean using the benchmark of the weakest and the most disadvantaged. How does Nigeria work for the ordinary man on the streets who does not have a godfather, who does not know a policeman who is a friend, who does not know who a judge who is a friend? who will want to apply for a job simply on the strength of his name and on the credit of his qualifications. How does Nigeria work for that kind of individual? How does Nigeria work in a state so that they can control their security Mr. Baron, without me, having to second guess? Let me jump in and ask you this one in conclusion. What would your advice be to those who may say, wait a minute, I'm benefiting from this system. I need to do what I can to make sure uh, I hang on and get what I can up until while I can. Or what's your advice as well to those who may be looking to, uh, they use the word rig, maybe the poll, the referenda, the referendum, to ensure that it favors them. What would you say to those categories of people? My advice to them will be that even if they benefit now, their children would never benefit. My advice to them is to consider the building site, the uncompleted building. The people who service the uncompleted building, i.e. The, the women who cook for the bricklayers, who fetch water for the bricklayers, at times they don't wish that that building will ever be completed. But truth be told, when that building is actually completed and functional, it is possible that their children get jobs in the building if it's an office, or even they move over to other things to do. There is vested interest in the current situation that Nigeria is. But it is not sustainable. 
I believe that Nigeria has a great opportunity now, and we must seize the moment. Over the next four or five years, we can complete this restructuring in a process that the states will be comfortable to manage themselves. It will throw up efficiencies in the system. It will throw up better security in the system. The federal government will be fleet-footed, comfortable, efficient enough to right. deal with the security issues, to deal with the foreign policy issues, with deal with the macroeconomic issues. I believe that states should have their own constitutions because the very reason that states don't have constitutions is the reasons why states are seen to not be accountable to the people. Well, I'm on that point, Mr. Byron. Uh, interesting perspectives. I wonder what, it's a similar thing, too, to those who work in the morgue who want to keep getting clients. Well, well thank you for coming on this morning, uh, Mr. Shinofagbara Byron, a development consultant, also a legal practitioner.